In this episode, we will be examining the actuator plate, considered by some to be a mystery part in Sturmiarcher NIG models. The actuator plate is a stamped sheet metal part that fits on the output side of the driver. I've assembled this 5-speed set of internals without the actuator plate in place. Let's watch what happens when we turn the driver backwards, simulating backpedaling. When we pull the indicator chain outwards, placing the clutch in the first, second, or third gear positions, we are able to freely backpedal. When we attempt to backpedal with the indicator chain in the release position, with the hub in fourth or fifth gear, backpedaling is impossible, as the hub is locked up in the reverse pedaling mode. Now I've reassembled the hub with the actuator in place. We don't need the indicator chain to demonstrate this because the hub will automatically default to fifth gear. With the actuator in place, we see that we can freely backpedal. Now let's see if we can demonstrate what's going on inside the hub. I've used the schematic of a 3-speed to simplify this demonstration, but a 5-speed works on the same principle. The pawls on the driver engage the internal splines in the ring gear. When the clutch is in the retracted first or second gear position, the pawls are free to ratchet rearward on the internal splines. When the hub is shifted to third gear, the clutch is coupled to the planetary carrier. Remember that the ring gear always turns at a faster rate than the planetary carrier. Now with the clutch engaged to the planetary carrier, there is enough resistance for the splines on the clutch to rotate the actuator plate rearwards and retract the driver pawls. With the pawls retracted, the ring gear is free to rotate backwards at its increased rate of speed. However, if we take the actuator plate out of the equation, the splines on the ring gear engage the pawls on the driver. And since it can't rotate at two speeds at once, gear lockup occurs. Forward pedaling or coasting is not affected. The hub can be safely operated with the actuator plate removed, but I recommend leaving it in place. So now we move on to the coaster brake model, and we'll show you the. Uh, function that the uh, actuator plate plays in this particular model. Okay, so um, <laughs> we've got uh, we've got one here with the uh, drive side of the axle sheared off, waiting for a replacement part for that one. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, um, with the uh, hub in third gear, we see that uh, as we turn the driver, the hub rotates in its overdrive mode. We hear the click, click, click and everything works as it's supposed to. When you back pedal, you activate the, the coaster brake, which is what is supposed to happen. So now we'll, uh, we'll take the driver out of here and have a look at it. First we'll take out the, the indicator Lock nut and cone. And we pull out the driver. Now, you'll notice that the driver has two sets of pawls, one facing forward to drive the hub and one facing backward for the braking action. All right, so now the actuator plate uh, engages the clutch and when you pedal forward it doesn't take very much force to cause the actuator plate to spring over the the coaster brake pawls and leaves the driving pawls out in the engaged position when we brake all right the actuator plate rotates the other way a little bit and the coaster brake pawls are exposed so that they can engage the ring gear and rotate it backwards and um, that actuates the coaster brake uh, through the um, the uh, the ring gear uh, activates the coaster brake through the planetary uh, carrier so uh, braking in all three gears is gear reduced for uh, maximum mechanical advantage. In the old days, uh, before the uh, 
advent of the no in-between gear driver. In third gear, uh, you would actually be activating the coaster brake uh, directly uh, from the clutch through the planetary gear, which uh, gave you less mechanical advantage, so you had to push harder on the brake to stop in third gear than you did in first and second. So that's another advantage of the new improved design. Now if we take the, uh, the actuator plate off, I'm not going to do that, but, but if we took the actuator plate off, this actually, with the, uh, with the coaster brake pauls exposed, the same thing would happen uh, in third gear pedaling forward as it, what happens uh, back pedaling in third gear uh, without the coaster brake pauls. In other words, if the coaster brake pauls were exposed or extended, in third gear, <laughs> you'd have the same thing going on. You'd, you'd be trying to uh, uh, do two gears at once, and in third gear, it would actually lock up pedaling forward. So, in the coaster brake model, this part is actually uh, vital, whereas in the non-coaster brake, uh, you can live without it.